radical Islamic terror. Three words our current commander-in-chief refuses to utter when talking about the threats that face our country. Tonight, in part four of my exclusive interview with Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, I asked the 2016 GOP candidate if our current president's approach has become more of a problem than a solution. Well, J.D., you've got a president who goes to the Pentagon and says, we're not going to beat this enemy with guns. We're going to have to change their hearts and minds. This is a generational conflict, he tells us. Thank God that General Patton and General Eisenhower didn't say that about World War II. The French would be speaking German today if they had taken that attitude. We've got a president who won't even say the words radical Islamic terrorism. He needs to say this, Islam has a problem, and that problem is radical Islam. He needs to condemn not just generic acts of violence, he needs to say to Muslim leaders, you have to condemn the individual murderers by name. Make it clear there are not martyrs going to enjoy a reward in the afterlife. They're going straight to hell where they belong. And secondly, that if you want these freedoms, you also need to explicitly embrace and endorse giving the same freedoms to people of different religious beliefs than your own. Now, I know that's not politically correct, and when you say things like that, people are going to say, oh, well, you must be racist or anti-Muslim nonsense. We're confronting evil. This is evil we are facing. We're not going to win this by propaganda. We've got to hunt them down and kill them. We need a president who will take the political handcuffs off the military. Give them the resources, the support. Say, give me a plan for victory. We don't need to contain and degrade them. Let's kill them before they can come here and attack us. And then finally, something he could do today. Why in the world do we have gun-free zones in our military facilities? Why in the world wouldn't we allow our men and women in uniform, the most finely trained military force in the, in the world, why wouldn't we allow them to protect themselves? I signed an executive order allowing our National Guardsmen to be armed at these recruitment centers, these other places. Why wouldn't he allow our military? They're still calling Fort Hood a workplace violence incident. How are we going to beat the enemy if we don't have the moral clarity and honesty, if our commander-in-chief won't even be honest with us about the enemy we face? Radical Islamic terrorism. Now, he will wage war on trans fats. He will apologize for America. He will criticize medieval Christians and the Crusades. But he won't say radical Islamic terrorism. So I think that first to beat this enemy, we need to define this enemy. Governor Bobby Jindal currently wrapping up a four-day swing in Iowa on his Believe Again tour. And we thank him for the time he spent with us at Iowa State University a few weeks back. Speaking of Republican presidential candidates, Donald Trump back on the campaign trail and the cap he's been wearing with that slogan, Make America Great Again, has become a sensation. Now you can get your very own Make America Great Again cap, a $25 value, absolutely free, just pay shipping and handling. Go to Newsmax.com slash Trump cap or call 1-800-485-4350. That's 1-800-485-4350. Now, let's take a look at what's on your mind via social media. The first comment from a viewer who wishes to remain nameless, and they write, in the future, when having interviews as you did with this week with Governor Jindal, be aware of the setting. It looked like you were in a restroom and quite frankly, I could not watch it. Well, thanks for that honest feedback. Just to explain why we had to use that location, the interview was shot at Stevens Auditorium on the Iowa State University campus. The only room available was uh, the makeup room for people going on stage. It was the makeup room, not a restroom, not our first choice of locations, but we were pleased to get a chance to speak to Governor Jindal. Our next comment comes from Lawrence, who writes about the Democrats. J.D., the earnestly naive Bernie Sanders is who the Democratic Party wants to be. The corrupt and venal Hillary Clinton is sadly who they've actually become. And finally, Marcus writes in about his frustration with a certain news network writing, quote, I haven't watched Fox News since last Thursday's debate, as it became quite apparent they are in the tank for wimpy establishment Republicans. I'm looking for a new home in which to view conservative viewpoints, and I really hope your network succeeds. Let's face it, Fox has split their britches with me and lots of other loyal viewers. So if you split your britches, we're glad to have you here on Newsmax TV. Oh, if you want to write us, real simple, send your comments to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. That'll do it for tonight. Stay brave, stay free, stay